Hi, I'm Linda from Meyer Hatchery, and I'm going to tell you a few things today that I do to try to keep my coop a little bit warmer or prepare it for the really cold weather. Uh, we're due to have a 30 or 40 degree temperature drop in the next day or so. So I want to get this as ready as I can for my birds to keep them safe. So the first thing you'll see behind me is a simple, cheap thing that I've just added, and I'm hoping it's going to help some. I do have a heavy-duty vinyl shower curtain added with a spring tension rod across this door. I don't have a small chicken door, so this is what I use to help keep the wind out. This is an east-facing door, so if, um, if the sun's out in the morning when I open the door, I can open both doors, let the sun in, and still know that the wind isn't going to be too much for them. They don't necessarily like coming under it, so what I did at the bottom is to just cut some slits vertical slits about six inches and I have them two to three inches apart um, and just adding those slits in the birds don't mind coming in now and they just pop their heads through the slits and everybody follows but without those slits they were kind of leery of it so I did add those to help make them more comfortable. In this corner you'll see I'm using hay and feed bags or bedding bags um, on the wall I just use a staple gun and put those in place. You can use tarps, uh, you can use cardboard, whatever you have around. And if you use the tarps and get nails in, then you'll be able to reuse those every year. This works pretty easy. They just go up, you pull them off in the spring and then put fresh ones up in the fall. There you can see I used a tarp and I also have more uh, straw bales. Everybody has plenty of room so they can snuggle up on those as well as on the floor wherever they're comfortable. I actually took the roosts out uh, just so that they would have to use the straw because it seems to me like it would be warmer than the roost and it still gets them up off the ground. Many know about the deep litter method. I generally don't use that because the floor of my coop is just wood painted with several coats of exterior paint and I try to keep it dry to help prevent rot and it's good for the chickens too. Low humidity helps prevent frostbite. When the forecast shows that the really cold temps are coming, I consider that anything that includes single digits or below with the wind chill. I'll add a handful of compost activator to the bedding on my coop floor a couple of days before the cold to try to give the microbes a boost and provide some extra heat for my birds. Cold isn't the optimal time to start composting, but I usually figure it isn't hurting and it might help, so it's worth a try. My usual method for using compost for coop heat might be a little different than others. I have a batch composter and move into the coop. It's best to do this in the fall and keep it going rather than try to start it when it's really cold and you need the heat now. I waited too long to start it this time, especially with the sudden drop in temperature in such a short amount of time. It froze. I've had other years where it definitely worked much better and provided warmth to my flock. It's a process and it takes time to get and keep it going. I try to put the composter by the windows so the sun can heat it up during the day. Mine is black so it absorbs heat and that helps. I put the composter on a tarp or have something under it so that if I add any water it doesn't drip directly onto the floor. I have a pan under it now and that's easy to dump outside. When I have dirty water from the waterer, I can dump that into the composter, turn it, and then empty the drip pan outside. If the compost is started in the fall, as the coop is cleaned, it can be changed or added to depending on how much is in it. When I do this, I try to leave some of the old compost in the composter before I add the new. The older compost should help to start the new batch. You can also add a compost activator. Remember to turn the composter daily to empty the pan under it as needed. It won't compost as fast or get as hot as when the weather is warm, but it might still provide some heat. Another way I've used compost in the coop is to keep water from freezing in the winter. It's gotten slushy, but it hasn't frozen on some pretty cold days. In the past, I've just put something on the ground in one corner, like a feed bag or a tarp mounted a little bit of the bedding on the floor in that area. Then I add the compost activator to it and a small amount of warm water, just enough to get 
it started and let it generate some heat. I don't want anything soggy. I'd make a little well and place the water dish in it. I usually kept the water outside the coop, but on very cold days of the year, when we're in single digits or below with the wind chill, I keep my birds inside. When they stay inside, the water comes in with them. This year, I'm going to try using a tire to contain the compost. I'll still put something under it, but I think using the tire stuffed with old bedding or leaves, compost activator, and a little water will add insulation and help keep the water from freezing. This time I used fall leaves and didn't have bad results, but I think they could have been better. Next time I'd make sure to have the brown and green or carbon and nitrogen ratio balanced for both the batch composter and what's inside the tire. I'd also try to get the compost in the tire started at least a few days before extreme cold comes and not do this only hours before it's expected. What are your tips and tricks to keep your flock warm? Let us know in the comments below. We look forward to hearing from you and I hope this helps.